Why are you looking there yeah. in the shadow, man? It looks like I'm doing something, you know? Yeah. Why are you so serious, man? For me, I'm looking at the data. Wow! Impressive! I never see that. No, First time on weekend. <laughs> I, I, just I, did it For the start, I think we do the same than last week. It worked well. Yeah. But the Ferrari was close to you, beside you at the start? No, no they were still behind. Yeah, no, they kept. Yeah, they kept the position. Oh. They kept position back, so they were one row back. Oh. I was waiting for them to be more aggressive on the start after all. Yeah. And I will try not to hit the ball at first lap. Have some red mark on the car. Mm -hmm. ah, we did the both. Huh? Yeah. You did once, I did the other. So we were equal straight away. Nine titles remain up for grabs here in Bahrain. And it's a swan song for Kazuki Nakajima and Anthony Davidson, who retire from racing after this one. See you, man. Have a good one. Yeah. It's a pleasure to be with you. Drivers and team titles up for grabs in GTE Am, then Keating with a mountain to climb. In GTE Pro, it is too close to call. A handful of points, the spread between Porsche and Ferrari in the driver's title battle and the teams. Don't want to lean as much to feel the balance. I mean, the grip was good. You had done too well. Four teams could win in LMP2. WRT last week's winners in Bahrain have the advantage, but both Jota cars and Outsiders United could pose a stiff challenge. Be a good boy, yeah? You too. <laughs> we will. Good luck. Ciao. You okay? Yeah, yeah. A nervous one. Me? No. <laughs> I am nervous. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Have a good one. You too, huh? Yes, you too. Get this one. I'm in second. Same. Welcome, drivers. So let's start this last briefing of the season. <laughs> yeah, great. Race one for me. And make sure we're in front of WRT and, and the 28. So for us, the championship, it's easy, we just have to win. Even if we are top of the ranking right now, nothing is granted because there are 38 points on the table. <laughs> What's the 31 cup? I don't know, some gillies oh. in red. Yeah, okay. Uh, I don't know what car that is. Driving time, minimum two hours, maximum five hours. It's limited to four hours for any six hour period in case we have full course yellow, safety car and so on. Yeah, when we start on the front row, it's an even bigger gap to the cars in front. Or do you want to reduce the gap? No, I think I should stay now. All the best, go for it and enjoy the race. 
Okay, so you got the brief. You know what you've got to do. We know who we're after. Let's not mess it up. Bring home the gold. In the hypercar drivers' title race, pole position for Toyota number seven has made their teammates in number eight job even harder. It is now a must-win race for the crew of the number eight car. I think the team has clearly decided that it is up to you guys to adjust your strategy. You're free to race here with the strategic weapons you have. The fact here would be that 29.3 uh, kilojoules is 31 laps, and you know you have to go 28.4 for 32 laps, so depending on your setup. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you, 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 situation as well, you know. Yeah, you guys saw that. Probably more sometimes, maybe. Yeah, sure exactly. So, but it doesn't need much to actually get a full stint yeah. or a full pit stop advantage. Anyway, you're free to race, but all the other racing rules still apply as the team has the full year. Um, turn one at the start, uh, I think the team agreed, second gear, 120k, pole position guy leads the race. I think with the boost schedule from last time, you know that you should be clear of the Alpine, but so the wind direction, so is forecasted to actually turn. It starts with west wind, we have now a little bit, and then by the evening it's east wind. And you know, so it's going to be... Yeah, yeah, that's the forecast. We don't know if it will be true, but we just have a change in weather pattern. But we know how sensitive the car is for the switches yeah. and the fuel consumption. So, And bottom line is, uh, you guys decide the championship between you. You know the team rules. We're already team world champions, so my job is done. <laughs> Oh, not mine, not mine. Hours, hours. Well, the bonus is on Monday, <laughs> like you. Cheers, go well. Enjoy, guys, enjoy. Enjoy, man, last race. Thanks, man. Zero two, not break in turn 12. Okay, we'll do. But don't worry, you are not doing it. Doing it during the race last week. We are ready for the championship decider. Toyota lock out the front row of the grid and lead at the start in Bahrain. 1-2 for Toyota Gazoo Racing down into the first turn. Down the inside in LMP2 gear, the Vandegarde takes the lead. Another fantastic move from the Dutchman in the yellow and black racing team Netherlands car. And there's a change out front. Trouble 91 outbreaks itself in GTE Pro. Doesn't hold off the first of the Ferraris. Three wide on the left of the picture, that is for third place in LMP2. Real Team's Loic Duval goes through ahead of WRT and Jota rivals. United in second, but it's Racing Team Nederland that leads. Got to keep yourself out of trouble on this opening lap. It's a long race in prospect. Toyota's dominated the front row in qualifying, but as number seven and eight run out a little wide, Nico Lapierre fires the Alpine into an early lead. GTM challenger Ben Keating in the Aston Martin with a puncture. Contact with Paul Dallalana on lap one. That could be their championship sunk. Two of the three Astons in the pits on lap one. Disaster. 
battle for the lead in GTE Pro. James Collado, Kevin Estra go door handle to door handle. Estra didn't give Collado much room there. He had to go off track, takes the place. He's leading the race for the moment. Porsche's second and third. And the second Ferrari looking to come around the outside in fourth place. This will be a no holds barred eight hours of racing in GTE Pro. It's going to be a long race for the drivers, an even longer race for the teams, and edge of the seat stuff. Estra back inside, retakes the lead. Collado will have to do it all again, countless times probably. It's a winner-take-all battle for the drivers. Whoever finishes in front wins the championship. Leaders are all together. Nico Lapierre for Alpine ahead of the two Toyotas that out-qualified the French car. There's team boss Philippe Signot. Looks relatively relaxed at the moment, and why not? Because after 10 minutes of following Lapierre, we still haven't seen anything approaching a move to get by from Mike Conway. Sebastian Buemi running third in the number eight Toyota Gazoo racing machine. But this is one of the world's most abrasive circuits for tyres. Okay, Seb, look after the right rear tyre. Look after the right rear tyre. Be okay. What, what are you seeing now? Is there any sign? We use more, we're using more of the tyre than car seven. Mike Conway alongside Nico Lapierre challenging for the lead. Current Toyota driver versus former Toyota driver. Conway was trying to bottle the Alpine up behind that GTE Am Ferrari. It did not work. Lapierre was aware of the danger. And Sebastian Buemi now looking maybe to put in a move on the number seven car. Teammate want to win this race. They have to win this race if they want to win the championship. But even then, they need something to happen to the number seven car. Here comes Conway again, unleashing the hybrid boost down the back straight. Does he get by under braking or does Lapierre carry the speed into turn 11? Conway is through for the lead. Sebastian Buemi trying to put the moves in now. Nico Lapierre for second place again. A GTE Amp car is the catalyst and down through these sweeping S's. Lapierre holds on. Doesn't look as though the Alpine has got quite the rear end that the Toyota does though. TGR car looking more stable than the blue machine. Lapierre fighting hard for second place. Wants to make the Toyotas really work for this. And he certainly is down into the turn 9, 10 hairpin complex. Traction out of the corner here will be the Toyota's advantage. Now the front wheels kick in as well. Help to pull him alongside. But the Alpine is quick in a straight line. Lapierre shows his nose. But Buemi is through for second. Qualifying order re-established. Toyota 1-2 ahead of the Alpine. We'll look here again as Buemi gets on the throttle. But Lapierre makes room for himself, gets his elbows out. Challenge on Roberto Gonzalez from Ferdi Habsburg comes late down the inside into turn 11, moves up to fourth in LMP2. The red and white WRT machine, the points leader. The 38 Jota car is one of the two Jota teams that could take the championship. Everybody being cautious with their tires early on. They're gonna have to double stint. Jerry Tassan and WRT. Oh, down the inside of Lloyd Duval, Ferdi Habsburg. There's a good move. He's now up into third in LMP2. Great opening stint from the Austrian. Habsburg again incisive, no mistakes. Great pass. It looks like Galil is driving target lap times, so don't over push the tires. Team reminding Habsburg to keep the tyres alive. Sean Galel here in the 28 Jota car makes his first stop. Second in the points coming into this race. And with points and a half in Bahrain, it could be anybody's championship yet. Just checking for debris and all the cooling ducts. Race leader is in in LMP2. 29, Racing Team Nederland. Great start again from Guido van der Gaard down the inside of everybody in turn one and builds up a big lead. WRT into the pits, Ferdi Habsburg stays in. Number 22 from United going a lap longer on fuel and still a contender. Real team are in, 
Pro-Am battle is their focus as well in LMP2. First round of stops completed, a net gain for 30 Habsburg, the 31 car, the 38 Jota looked to have lost ground a little there. Looks like Inter Europol have gained in the pit lane as well. Trouble for Alpine. Nico Lapierre very slow as the turn 10 hairpin. Not really back up to speed yet either, although the car is going. Is this the end of the road? Not even one hour into the season finale. Car struggling to select gears, it seems, for Nico Lapierre. This could be a major problem. Alpine in the pits and back into the garage. It is a major problem. Any chance of a win here? Long gone now. We had a gearbox uh, issue. We could not select the good gears. So the last uh, 10 lap, we were struggling with uh, upshift and downshift. And then we decided to stop because the problem was getting too big and we were afraid to damage the gearbox. So we pitted and they changed it some parts and let's hope it's, it's working now. Three laps lost, but the car is ready to go back into action. On board with James Collado in the 51 Ferrari, sends it down the inside and takes the lead in GT Pro away from Kevin Est. It's been hammer and tongs action in GT Pro for the first hour, a little touch there as well. Challenge for the lead in GTE Am. Roberto Lacourt from pole in the blue Ferrari. Francesco Castellacci slips up the inside. Another great opening stint from Castellacci. He did this last week as well in the six hours. Coming from sixth or seventh after qualifying up into an early lead. And a lapped 98 Aston right behind them. Ferdy Habsburg about to challenge Phil Hansen here down the inside. Another clean clinical move from the Austrian up into third place in LMP2. Same car, same engine, same tyres as the United team. But it looks like the red and white WRT machine is just better dialed into this Bahrain circuit. United swept all before them last year. They're not doing it in 2021. Replay of Sean Galeal and the battle for the GTM lead. He takes avoiding action and spins. And now, Sean, and now, all good, all good. Come on, and now. Well, he's trying to go by the lead battle in GTEM, and as they come towards him, has to take to the curbs to avoid hitting them. Sean Galeal recovering from that spin. Here he comes, trying to take the place away from Renga van der Zander in the yellow and green into Europol car and moves up to six in LMP2. Good pass down into turn one. Renga van der Zander squirrels off the corner of the Dutchman, chasing the Indonesian. Looks like Galeal has got a slight pace advantage though. Change of lead coming up is there. Yes, Sebastian Buemi waved by Mike Conway. He has been quicker. He's clearly asked the team to allow him to go through. Hey, Mike, don't forget, you can still try to follow. Let's just think about that we're not on the same strategy. Pitched off for Sean Galel. He stays in. Fuel is done. A full set of used tyres, but fresher goes on. Precious commodity in this heat. <laughs> Jumbo Supermarkets boss, Fritz van Aert, a racing team Netherlands. He's been strapped into the car after a great opening stint from Gerda van der Gaard, the leader in Pro-Am and overall in LMP2. Points leaders, WRT, are in the pits. Driver change, Robin Freins bolted in. Driver change for 38 Jota as well. Out is Roberto Gonzalez and in is the man who completes his racing career this season as a driver here in Bahrain, Ant Davidson. United stopping a lap later than their rivals. Driver change, Philip Hansen to Felipe Albuquerque. United swept all before them last season with the title in the World Endurance Championship, European Le Mans Series and Le Mans victory. Still a long way to go in this race. United could win it, Jota could win it. As of now, though, it is WRT with the slenderest points advantage. And WRT, the newcomers, could end up with the title. I was so nervous coming in the morning and uh, coming to the track. 
just knowing everything that's going on. And uh, as soon as I got the helmet on, I was so happy I was doing the start because just all the nervosity when I win, the excitement came in and I knew what I had to do. So I just had a great time and, and pushed through. Got up quite quickly up to P2 and I again hope I was entertaining for the commentators and uh, just had an amazing time out there. Um, then we had some smite problems, but we were coming back. It's been a strong race so far for WRT. Robin Fry is putting the moves in on Stoffel van Dorn in the 28 Jota Sport car. Through he goes for third in LMP2. Heading towards the end of the second hour and still no closer to knowing who is going to be the champion in this category. Fascinating racing here in Bahrain. <laughs> Trouble for Catherine Legg in GTEM. The Iron Dames car had contact and now the tyre shredding itself, ripping the front of the car apart back into the garage. Here's where it happened. Contact with Satoshi Hoshino in the D-Station Aston. Full course yellow for debris clear up means that they will lose a little less time in the garage. Actually, it wasn't really a big impact. It was more, I thought he opened the door and he was thought I was a pro car or something and he was going to let me go by. So I went to the inside and then he kind of came back and closed the door. So I take responsibility for it, but um, it's just one of those things, you know, it's unfortunate for everybody involved. Well, that triggers a round of pit stops. GT Pro battle taking fuel and driver changes at Ferrari. Ferrari going with two drivers per car, Porsche with three drivers for the longer race and the hotter conditions. Marshalls picking up debris from that clash. And they've been helped out by one Pablo Montoya. Look, he's brought in a long strip of tire debris that the car has picked up on its way to the pits. Tough battle in GTE Pro between two exceptional teams and you can cut the tension with a knife. Yeah, I would say set that 6.5 for the first thing and then you go 7.5 for the second thing. But I never locked the front. The car is really, really good, especially on the second thing. I think the feeling I had was the worst. I mean, it was really bad. It was really bad to start with, oh, the first stint was not good, the second was better, uh, but also I was behind and he was also behind. You are not here with the crew? Ah, oh, with the pin. I fight with him and then fuck, this guy comes in the pit. Oh, it's her. So, mega head. Keep the 51 behind was really, really important. Great job. GTE Am on Tenterhooks. Francois Brodo the leader, but here comes Roberto Lacorte in the Chetelar Racing Ferrari that qualified on pole. Takes the lead of the race away from the reigning champion and points leader, Francois Brodo. The HE3A, of course, of Ferrari, really well positioned to win the title again. Fritz van Aert in the yellow and black racing team Netherlands car, the leader in LMP2. Right behind him now, Robin Freins. But this is the end of Fritz's stint. Robin Fries has taken the entire stint to reel in the gentleman driver who led the race. And that shows what a great advantage they had at the start in Racing Team Netherlands. Fritz pits now for fuel and to hand over to one of his teammates. That's a great stint from Van Aert. WRT go through into the lead, but it's absolutely critical that the gentleman drivers really play their part if you want to win a race. Eight seconds ahead. Yeah, I know. Same, same, okay. same. Same, same, same. Good job, man. It's not too hot, eh? So far, so good. <laughs> There's massive debris on the track. Yeah, yeah. Lots of pickup, you know. Eh? When you go off your line, it's the tires takes one or two laps to get your tires clean. Yeah. To me, anyway. Yeah, yeah. So, well, I'm happy we're still in the same uh, distance. Yeah. Good stuff. Way to go. 
Racing Team Nederland leading in Pro-Am. Here's the battle for second place. Juan Pablo Montoya being harassed by Norman Nato for real team. And he squeezes through on the inside. Seventh in P2, now up to second in P2 Pro-Am. Driver change for LMP2 leaders, WRT. Sorry guys, too much support on the radio. Just try and help. All good mate, all good. Are we keeping the heat on the gap? Are we keeping the heat on the gap? It's not all good really, but uh, come on. Sorry. We can still recover, we can still recover from this, so heads up, it's not efficient. Five hours to go. Rare mistake by Ann Davidson, was expecting the call to pit, thought he heard it. This though is Stoffel van Dorn, he is due in the pits now. It feels like the car is just not like biting in the low speed corners. Okay. So like we're grabbing a little bit the front, but also the rear is not super stable. And we're struggling a little bit on traction. Getting old, mate. <laughs> Was that because you were doing the deep work yeah, and you thought? Yeah, Because yeah. usually you do that on the way yeah. in. You do it on the way in. So, oh, I just. I couldn't believe it, man. You were doing so well. I know. I mean, yeah, you did so me. well, but you were only fight. You could see stuff. You yeah. could see it. No, I could see. I didn't need a gap. I could see. I was catching, but. Uh, those were practically at, at zero. Mm -hmm. Well, I had to work bloody hard to catch it back, but. So stupid, man. That's why you're retiring. Hey man, Same. relax, relax, it's fine. We'll get it back. Sunset in Bahrain, but not even halfway through at the final race of the season. Battle for LMP2 lead. Sharmil AC for WRT down the inside of Jop van Oetert in the Racing Team Netherlands car and squeezes through. Different tyre strategies now starting to play out in all our categories. In the pits for Toyota Gazoo Racing is car number seven. Jose Maria Lopez stays in. They are just shadowing the number eight team. Number eight have to win. 83 Ferrari leading the championship in GTE Am and also a contender for the race picture, having such a great finale to the season, this crew. New driver and fresh er tyres. They're not completely unused, may have done qualifying perhaps. Away goes Alessio Rivera, one of the sensations of the season. Great battle here, 38 Jota coming back past the Racing Team Netherlands car, Fritz van Ed back in the yellow and black machine. And squeezing down the inside, Roberto Gonzalez had to allow for the fact van Ed needed to come past the pro-class Porsche. Good racing by both men there. Alessandro Pierre Guidi leading in GTE Pro from Michael Christensen. Porsche putting the third driver into the car, former champion. Two years ago with Kevin Est, keeping the Porsche team in the hunt. The Ferrari had a bit the upper hand on us uh, when the sun was out. Now at uh, dusk, uh, it seemed like uh, we could be on the same pace and we hope that we can now increase our pace. Halfway through the final race of the 2021 season, Toyota Gazoo racing 1-2 in hypercar. Jota chasing Team WRT for the lead in LMP2. It's on as even. Ferrari Porsche, Ferrari Porsche in GTE Pro. Chetelar back at the head of GTE Amber, being chased by the 83 car of the champions. TF Sport, the 33 car, strong recovery after that first lap puncture.
Sarah in the car on 4 New. Sarah in the car on 4 New. Vital information for Michael Christensen. Who's behind and what weapons have they got in the arsenal? The lead championship Porsche in second place, but the second string Ferrari starting to attack now, holding him up. Lots for the Porsche team to think about. Charles here for Daniel Serra. The Chetela Racing and Ferrari just in the wrong spot for Michael Christensen. The Porsche driver has to take avoiding action. Through comes the Ferrari on the inside, the red car. The pro car moves up into second in GT Pro. Ferrari 1-2, Porsche 3-4. Has the balance of power changed? Especially in the traffic. But in the last lap, I was pushing, but uh, easy to for us. And these fucking other guys, they don't go out the way for like three laps. Great three-way battle this in GTM. All Ben Keating lunging to the inside of Thomas Floor into turn one. There's contact. They both go off. Jackson Evans goes through in the background in the Porsche. Keating down the inside. Floor didn't see him coming, I don't think. And contact for the Aston. It's not their race. Into the pits, Ben Keating. They will fuel the car, clean the screen, but that contact on the left front. There's Tom Ferrier, the team boss at TF Sport. The car is going into the garage, and this surely is the end of their championship chances. Race leading Toyota in the pits for regular service. Brendan Hartley stays in. They've been in the lead since they were waved by the number seven car at the end of the first hour. It's a must-win race for the number 18. Problem with the left rear. And a full set of new tyres going on for Hartley. Northwest AMR Aston Martin. This is Marcos Gomez. Oh, and assaulting from behind. Well, a little bit of a sixes and sevens. Trying to get the undercut. Scott Andrews in the car guys. Kessel Racing Ferrari takes the rear off the Aston. The Aston with more problems. No rear grip for a start, but also smoking from that right rear. Francois Perodo, Nick Nielsen, Alessia Rivera. Three hours away from a second straight championship in GTE Am. What a race they're having, leading the category now. It's been such a good crew. Their second year together. Battle for second in GTE Am. Ferrari versus Porsche. Roberto Lacorte in the dark blue. Ferrari for Chetilar down the inside. Jackson Evans squeezes by nice and cleanly. Porsche moves on. into our six of the race here in Bahrain and still no clue who's going to win in GTE Pro. Kevin Escher in the 92 Porsche, here he comes. He's got a run now on James Collado for the lead of the category and this will swing the balance away from Ferrari and towards Porsche if he gets in front. Oh, it's going to be close. Super tight, the tiniest of touches. Fantastic racing between these two teams. Real standard bearers in GT racing. We'll take a look again, how close is this? Kevin Escher trying to figure out how to get by the Ferrari but not be held up by the Aston in front. And just a little kiss between the two. Professional racing in every category and the pressure is still relentless.
James Collado in the pits for the 51 Ferrari team, the championship challengers, Alessandro Pierre Guidi, who along with James was the world champion in 2017. Pierre Guidi taking over. How is this going to play out now? Four fresh tyres for the new driver, and that could be key. Getting better every 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 lap. However, it's really tough to manage the the tyres on a double stint. I think I did the best job possible and maximised the most potential out of the car. Um, whether it's enough at the end, who knows? But going forward, we've got better better tyres than Porsche now, and uh, we've just got to push as hard as we can to uh, to try and catch them. GTM lead battle being passed by the number seven Toyota. There's a chance. Antonio Fuoco in the Chetelar Ferrari is offline at the hairpin. Jackson Evans in the Porsche from behind. Fuoco runs out very wide indeed to keep up the momentum looking back from the Toyota. It's a drag race beside the drag strip. Jackson Evans on the inside line. The Porsche coming back up through the order as the conditions get cooler. Oh, and the Ferrari driver is really hanging on wheel to wheel. Looks like the Porsche has the advantage though and takes the lead. Christian Reed, the team boss, triple stinted the double seven at the start. That's all their gentleman driver hours out of the way. Now it's pro drivers all the way to the finish. We'll take a look again at this. Rubbins racing, it certainly is. quicker than Vondorm, and you are five tenths quicker than Davidson. Stand by, let me check. Negative, Robin. Both Iotas are on the first double stint of this race. Okay. WRT absolutely crushing it. There's Ferdy Habsburg watching happily. Lead battle in LMP2 Pro Am. High class racing in six. Racing Team Netherlands, Jot van Eitert down the inside of Anders Fjord. Back is their contact. Ooh, it was very close. Very, very close. Still very close. Fjord back doesn't want to give it up. But the turn gives it there to Jot van Eitert. Hanging on around the outside. Brave move from the young Dutchman, but it pays off. They have the lead in Pro-Am once more. Driver change, driver change to continue. Eat your box. And just like that, the career as a driver ends for Anthony Davidson on his terms. The 2014 FIA World Endurance Champion is out of a car for the last time. It's a, a strange feeling. Um, still, yeah, I haven't. I, I can't quite process it at the moment. But um, yeah, there were a few tears. I'm gonna must admit, you know, with people coming around hugging me and saying I did a good job. I knew I was doing a good job out there. Um, almost redeemed myself uh, for earlier on the, uh, the the incident coming through the pit. So a bit of a an old man moment, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm not that's why I'm, anything. that's why I'm walking away. Regular stop for the 28 Jota car. The battle for the LMP2 title is still raging. Number eight Toyota leading comfortably here in Bahrain. Sebastian Buemi fast approaching the end of his stint. And that means the final swan song for Kazuki Nakajima, who retires at the end of the race. Before the race start, uh, I was a bit uh, emotional when I saw Anthony because yeah, we are basically leaving the Wakefield together and uh, we were the teammate before and we went through uh, a lot of hard times. So yeah, it, at that time it was a bit emotional, but as soon as the race started, uh, my focus is fully on the racing and uh, it hasn't changed uh, a lot uh, from the normal time. Yeah. Jose Maria Lopez takes over number seven to Ota from Mike Conway for the final element of the race. And they are on target for a second straight championship win.
A nice touch from Toyota to give the final run in this race to Kazuki Nakajima. He will be the man to take the number eight car to the chequered flag and hopefully finish his Toyota career with a win. Well, he's known the highs and lows, hasn't he? He was in the car when it stopped a lap from victory at Le Mans. He went on from that low to win three Le Mans 24-hour races, the 2014 FIA World Endurance Champion. He ends his 22-year racing career with Toyota here. Sebastian Auger, seven-time World Rally Champion, here for the rookie test after the race. Full course yellow, full course yellow. A little over an hour to go. Full course yellow, a chance for everybody to top up tanks. It won't be enough to get anyone through to the end of the race. But strategy now in all of our nine remaining championship battles could be absolutely critical. Michael Christensen in for the final stints for the 92 Porsche team. That's interesting. Not Neil Jarney, the regular driver, but Christensen, the former world champion with Estra. 51 hits its marks. Just a two driver lineup in the 51 Ferrari. The strategy has been very different from, uh, from us and the 51. At one point, they were quicker and we had to try something. We did and um, it was working. We, we could uh, retake the lead later on. Uh, but now the gap is 2.7 seconds. They have slightly better tires than us. Um, and we are very tight on fuel. So uh, I think both of us are tight on fuel, but yeah, it's uh, my kidding? nerves are are quite, uh, yeah, I don't know. I'm not, not sure what to say there. Number eight Toyota leading the race here in Bahrain. Into the closing stages, it is not enough. Their teammates will finish five points ahead. Lopez, Kobayashi and Conway still on target to be world champions. Final stop for WRT, the Belgian crew on their way to victory here and the title, Robin Freins will stay in. Nervous times for everyone. Half a second in the GG Pro battle, the two Jota cars coming through. Michael Christensen, the white Porsche, leads from the 51 Ferrari of Alessandro Pierre Guidi, who's getting squeezed out wide by the second Jota car. As of the final turn, keeps his foot in across the gravel. Oh, a breathing space now opens up for the Porsche. 14 minutes. 14 minutes to win the championship. Is this a telling blow? The Ferrari in second's been all over the back of the Porsche, but Pierre Guidi getting forced out wide does not lift. There is your race leader, Toyota Gazoo Racing, looking for another 1-2 here. Already hypercar teams champions. They will take 1-2 in the driver's title race as well. Oh, and Christensen! He's off track. What has happened to the Porsche? The Ferrari team, what are they seeing? No! Estra can't believe it. Is that the end of the race? What has happened here? Christensen hit from behind by Alessandro Pierre Guidi. There was a P2 car. It's the United car. Look down the inside. Christensen's got nowhere to go. Can't turn in. And Pierre Guidi's so close he can't avoid contact. Neil Jarni understandably not happy. Our race director Eduardo Freitas talking with the stewards to see what they're going to do about that. Car 51 must give the position back to car 92. Good decision. Gives us 10 minutes to sort out the championship racing. That puts this car back in front. Christensen will be the leader. And slowing down is Pierre Guidi into the pits though in the background is Christensen. They both need fuel. Porsche go for the pit lane now. But Pierre Guidi has almost stopped on the straight to give the place back. Now what happens? Well, Porsche fuel. Ferrari will need to fuel as well. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Ferrari stop now. Look at the clock. Seven and a half minutes remain. Do they have to give the place back? Will Porsche take the place after the pit stop? How is this going to work out? Who's going to be the champions? Alex Stalig and the Porsche Brains Trust trying to figure out how to deal with this. Out comes the 83 Ferrari that will win in GTM and will be champions. 
but 51, Alessandro Pierre Guidi leads by a second and a half from 92, Michael Christensen. And I don't think Christensen's got the tyres. Is Pierre Guidi going to give it back now? Will we have a five minute race for the championship? That would be sensational. Damage on the Ferrari. Look, the bonnet is starting to peel open at speed. One of the bonnet clips is open from that impact. Oh, Amato Ferrari and the crew can barely believe what's going on. Late minute, the last minute dive bomb for second place in LMP2. It's all going on. Five minutes. We've had 60 plus hours of racing and now the last five minutes of the season have gone insane. Change for second in LMP2 between the Jota cars. That won't change the championship positions, I think, but all eyes on GTE Pro. Pierre Guidi Collado at the moment will be champions. I'm not sure anybody knows exactly how this is going to work out. Think Toyota still running in the race. Right now, though, all eyes on GTE Pro. Ferrari drivers and teams titles will go to the men in red. Or will they? Can the Porsche team produce anything now. One and three quarter seconds behind. Ferrari has got the pace, hasn't it, that it did not have last week. Jose Maria Lopez, Kamui Kobayashi and Mike Conway will be champions. The number eight Toyota will win the final race of the hypercar debut of this Toyota GR010. The number eight crew and the number seven crew come out to the pit wall. There's Kamui Kobayashi, Mike Conway, waiting for Lopez to win them the championship. And the checker flag is out in Bahrain for the final time in his racing career. Kazuki Nakajima will take victory for Toyota Gazoo Racing. Sebastian Buemi, Kazuki Nakajima and Brendan Hartley win the final race. Their teammates are the champions. It's the world champion. Well done. Well done, Cap 7. Thank you, mate. <laughs> world champions, Gary. World champions again. What a debut season in world endurance racing for WRT. The title and victory at Le Mans for Robin Freins, Ferdy Habsburg, and Charles Milesi. I think they like that. Alessandro Pierre Guidi takes the checkered flag for Ferrari. They win in GTE Pro and Ferrari take both titles. What an end. What a race. What emotion. Thank you, man. Thank you so this, much. This is your win, you know. I hope we keep it. It's mate. your win. I hope. <laughs> I don't know if you keep it. Vici in LMP2 Pro Am on the road and in the title race to Racing Team Netherlands, Fritz van Aert. And again. Francois Perodo is GTE AM champion. His third title, his second successive with Nick Nielsen and Alessio Rivera. Well done, mate. I'm sorry, mate. Tension bubbling over here.
No, I just yeah, think this time, so this time would be very appropriate to leave the podium. I think this this would be after the donuts on track, winning like this. I think beautiful. You you drew very fast. No doubt who the AF Corsa team think are champions. The results are provisional, but as now, victory for Alessandro Pierguidi and James Collado. Third place for their teammates mean that Ferrari are the champions in drivers and teams. Toyota Gazoo Racing come out 1-2 in hypercar. Alpine in third place after a great debut season for the brand new top tier category. And a great way to say goodbye to Kazuki Nakajima, who's raced with Toyota for 22 years. And after all the action, the awards. Outdoors in the cool of the evening, celebrating our champions and the names that have made 2021's FIA World Endurance Championship such a thriller. A new era of sports car racing has dawned with Hypercar. Toyota claimed the first title, but so many more are coming a mouth-watering prospect for 2022 and beyond.